Hello, Internet. I'm Jackie Fox. And today we're going to be talking about something that I actually have an academic background in. I took every art class that my high school offered, which ended up being, I want to say, six or seven consecutive art classes, in addition to continuing to study art through college, though not as much because the community colleges were a lot more utilitarian or, uh, you know, technical in that they weren't really teaching things that weren't necessary for degree programs. So there was like one art class, just drawing 101, um, and an art history class. That, that was it. Um, but I do know quite a bit about art. And I, as a person, as a fox, I think that the conversation around AI and AI itself is fascinating, and I think that it's probably going to be the thing that changes the future the most, um, in addition to what we're going to learn to be able to do as we are getting closer to things like the recently um, announced kind of project to create a vaccine for various types of cancer before 2030 or by 2030. Um, so, like, mRNA, DNA medicine, like, viral medicine, those kinds of things, and AI, I think, are going to be huge in the future. And there is this big conversation, and there's this big conversation about a man who won an art competition for what is really beautiful. Like, I love this. I love the style that it's kind of painted in. Um, I mean, you know, it's replicating no thanks. And it's just it's it's really cool. And I guess the the part of the controversy that I agree with is that maybe he should have been a little bit more specific than saying that it was digital art. But at the same time, <clears throat> and spoiler alert, ultimately I believe that this is an art form. And I'm going to show you why. I'm actually going to go through the process with Stable Diffusion and show you why I think of it as an artistic enterprise. This is just, in my mind, another medium. So this was done using Midjourney. And it's been really hotly contested. And the one thing that basically anyone who has taken art history or maybe the entirety of an art one class knows is that modern art is the way it is and, you know, approaches representation the way that it does because of the photograph. And the photograph was not initially considered. And the photograph was not initially considered to be an art form. It was thought as this insurgent thing that was going to wipe out all art, which at that time was mainly based around portraiture, unless you were just kind of faffing off and you were one of those starving artists that never really achieved any fame until after you died and were actually kind of revolutionary. You were pretty much a portrait artist before then. And this completely took over the portrait scene. So... If you couldn't replicate the realism of a portrait, I mean, I guess you had the edge in color for a while, but people were also fascinated by black and white images, black and white photographs. But, you know, we started to see people like Marcel Duchamp, you know, and <clears throat> if you think about it, a urinal is a really fascinating porcelain sculpture. If, if you, like, remove the context of it, it's supposed to be hanging on a wall for you to pee in. If you were you you did not have the concept of what a urinal was, this might look like an artistic sculpture in some way, like very abstract, of course. But I don't know, like maybe like a miniature for an uh, a, an auditorium style thing. I can kind of see that with the stage in the back uh, where the pee is supposed to go down <laughs> the drain. Oh my god! But part of the idea there was to say that art can have art can go beyond the boundaries that we had previously given it and you know from Jackson Pollock to 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 you know the entire movement that came after the photograph there were a lot of people who pushed the ways that things could be art and along that journey we began to accept photographers as valid artists and i mean 
how about this? Just look, listen to like 30 seconds of someone explaining how to do really intense shit on a fancy camera and tell me that knowing how to set those settings and how much they can control the outcome and how much lighting and staging and framing and all of these other artistic concepts can change a photograph. It is obvious to us that it was an art, but when it was introduced, it wasn't. And what I would like to demonstrate today is that this is just a medium, the same way that a photographer's medium is the photograph and say a painter's medium is whatever forms of paint they choose to use. A digital artist could easily use these kinds of processes, a very valid way to sketch. Like there is absolutely no reason why you can't take one of these images and alter it and paint into it and actually apply real artistic technique to it to make it better because it's not, you know, unless you do thousands of iterations and you're highly specific, it's probably not going to be exactly what you want. There's always something that you could probably clean up and touch up and make better. So there, you know, it is a starting point potentially, but there's also a lot of real finesse to how actually using this works. And I'm using Stable Diffusion UI. It's CMDR2 on GitHub is the creator of that. And it is very nice. It, it runs on your system actually through a command prompt window and through a, uh, a browser-based UI. So before we get into that, I want to show you yet basically what I did yesterday. So just starting out, I, I did like some classical angel stuff and then I worked in uh, different artists. You can actually see kind of my settings. The prompt is actually in the, all that information is there. So you can see that those were all kind of the same. So then I took this, which is the image that I showed you earlier. You can now actually kind of zoom in on because the texture in this is just so cool. That is, well, no, that could be fair. You know, like, it, it just, man, it, it took an artist to create that, no matter what medium it was created through. So using that as kind of a basis, I created some more images to kind of riff on that. And these are really interesting, I think. This one has a cursed face. Just, nope. But like the details are all really cool. I love the use of color. This was another rift. I'm still using the prompt about angels, which are all kinds of fucked. <laughs> she looks pretty upset, but that actually kind of looks like a passable face. Like I, I've seen older <laughs> old paintings that were worse. This, ooh, oof, this guy. But the, the wings look pretty cool. I like the contrast in this. Let's see, what was the artist? So I was referencing an artist in here. Oh man, it doesn't include that part. The prompt is actually a lot longer than what you're seeing. <laughs> so I did a series based on that. <laughs> this, this angel got all the wings. This one got all the arms. <laughs> Except for these two. You know, you still got those. <laughs> so I kept playing around. And I think all of that, you know, that was my first day. So then I'm trying to figure out how to make like, so then I'm trying to figure out how to make like a YouTube thumbnail. I want a, a, a man nursing a scraped knee. Wait, what? A man on the right side of the frame facing left, nursing a scraped knee like a child by Norman Rockwell. <laughs> and that was interesting. And then I eventually got to this uh, riffing off of this image. And then I just went for body horror based on this image. So using this, I iterated out and got to this. Still based in the art style of Norman Rockwell, but grotesque body horror, which is a fascinating combination. And I did a couple more like this face. Very Norman Rockwell to me, right? But like super realistic and just creepy. 
And then we get into, so first I took this image, not with all this background and I didn't stretch my hair out yet, but I just took that image and iterated on that in the style of Yoshitaki Yamano, who is the person who does um, some of the concept art from the beginning for the Final Fantasy series. Um, and a lot of these are that Yoshitaki is in the, uh, is, is like the artist reference for the images so just going off of that since it had a black background it didn't really know what to do with the background but it kind of iterated on my image flowing hair did lengthen my hair so i did figure out how to make it <laughs> basically take this and give it longer hair but it wasn't working out for me yet so i also wanted a background so i threw this in and this actually went in the wrong direction with hair but holy shit this image is so cool you can definitely tell that I use street art because look at the, the beautiful, like, spray-painted background and style of it. Um, but then you've got, like, the traditionally very white, almost white-painted, uh, kind of white-face-ish uh, look of uh, Yoshitaki's work. So, still trying to take that image and give myself long hair. It's, you're going to see several from the same seed, and I'm going to explain as we're actually making our own image uh how the seed works but the seed is basically like the map for the noise that it adds to an image to iterate it or to to you know kind of evolve it essentially and i dig the hair i actually really dig this texture and the way that the jacket looks very interesting and so like this is another iteration from that seed. Interesting, it got the floral print was part of the prompt and it worked that into the shirt while leaving the jacket about the same. But look at this killer like rainbow mullet. <laughs> I have no idea what the background is doing, but not the craziest hair that seed has produced. That would have to go with this like, I don't know, exploding afro that looks like an angry coral reef i'm not really sure this is cool though i dig this so then i think this image i was really proud of this worked out really well i loved the way that it's kind of a bit more gender ambiguous although we've still got like our very rounded chin um but very interesting like the clothing is kind of gender ambiguous and then you've just got this long flowing hair that I found beautiful and it worked the flowers into the hair in a really mad way. And uh, the background is probably my least favorite, but, um, you know, compared to it, it's not bad. It's not terrible. That would probably be the part I tune up. So I take this and then I iterate it through other seeds to kind of move the features around, essentially. And I get something like this. And then... I think these were all off of this, three or four of these were off of the same request. Different seeds with the same base image. You can see that because I'm using uh, Yoshitaki's work, I'm getting more uh, Asian influenced features. I worked in the tag American at some point, I think maybe around here, and I got this image, which feels like a thumbnail. There we go. Here's full res. This image, which I really liked. Again, we've got the flowers in the hair. We've got the long wispy, but holy crap. I love this like watercolor effect that was done down here. And a lot of these. Um, so when I was thinking about how I wanted to express myself here, I thought about like what mediums, if I could use a couple different mediums physically to make an image, what would I use? Um, I would probably use watercolors. I would probably use kind of sketchier elements, maybe like some pencil shading like kind of what you see in the neck here is really interesting to me um but then probably like hard line ink over watercolor and you know in thinking about how to describe what i would use and how i would use it uh you know that's what kind of got me to here and then i think i worked in genderqueer and i got this which is really interesting uh apparently working queer and get you get you rainbow elements for sure which makes sense 
And then I iterated, I think, on that image because I really liked it. And this this shirt effect is so cool. Gets a little washed out here, but I actually like that because I think I was using one of the art styles that I was using was concept art. So because I wanted these to look a lot like a sketch, I wanted it to look like something that I would draw. And this this one. And so, OK, so one of the other artistic elements of this and let me see if I saved both of them or if I eventually deleted the other one. I think I did. Yeah. Um, you can actually stop it before it gets done. I usually like to stop them about 95% of the way. And what I noticed they do in that last portion is define the face, give lips color, kind of fix eyes, and remove a lot of these kind of sketchy, shady elements that look like they were kind of sketched in with pencil. It really cleans it up, but it also makes it look very flat in a lot of ways. And you can see that, especially in images like this, that it went all the way through. Like, especially look at, just kind of compare lips and eyes and the flatness of the face. This is fully finished. Also, these glasses are horrendously plain uh, up close. So that's kind of what it, 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 it looks very uncanny and wrong, right? But if you stop it a little bit early, you can get something more like this. And so iterate on that. A little bit like more morbid because this kind of reminds me of like a heart or a beating heart. And she's so like frail, but has this kind of cornucopia and like these huge glasses. I, I love it. But I think this one was fully finished. So you see how like it looks very airbrushed and smooth and the lips almost look too realistic. I think I stopped this one a bit early. Another thing that I noticed that it removes a lot in that last step is often like a shadow from the glasses or things like that, like little uh, the more subtle shadows, it smooths them out in addition to that shady stuff. So this was stopped early so I could get that line still in there. And then the colors make this like seem very... Um, she reminds me of a mermaid and like this kind of looks like a conch shell. This this didn't end up coming out very flowery. But again, this is kind of the same print and I'm adding in maybe phrases as we go. Like at some point I worked in high fashion and I started getting some of these. I'm also like playing with the width, as you can see. So I get into this. I've worked in the word fox a couple of uh, images I've shown you ago. This was the first one that actually found itself willing to put a fox in the image for me. And holy shit, I want this shirt. It's really cool. And the face ended up getting kind of the gender ambiguity that I wanted while retaining kind of the flowy hair. This one looked too masculine. Um, I liked it. It was the only one that actually put facial hair on there because I did want to... I, I was actually working facial hair into the prompt. I did want it to be a little bit more realistic, but uh, I figured out that I actually kind of like the faces better if I include, because I was including masculine and feminine, I believe, in the in the tags so that it would kind of give me elements of both. Is gender queer kind of threw things off. It, it didn't, that was a bit more of a wild card than just including those two and kind of getting a mix. Um, but I did end up removing Adam's apples which uh because you can you can tell it what not to put in the image but this is among a few where you know the shoulders and everything are really just it's a bust actually it's like a drawing of a bust essentially but really cool i the face just looks so handsome look at that the ears do kind of pop out a little bit from there, I get my second image that has a fox kind of in the same place. Um, clearly, there's there's kind of something. I think I was using the same seed, which is why you're getting a lot of the same positioning, because I really liked how it sat in the frame. And you'll kind of see that through these. I'm using the same seed. Everything ends up in the same places. And then I actually don't have I didn't save the interim, but there was one that had it was like this weird it looked like kind of it, it, it looked like an Arctic fox that had a squished face like it bred with a pug. And it had one, two orange flowers on the sides of its head. And it was up there. And I was like, okay. So I used the in painting feature 
which is in beta, and it it's iffy, to turn that into an orange fox. And I had to iterate a couple times, and it, it kind of got there a little bit at a time. But then I said, well, I want this fox to actually extend through the image instead of just being like a disembodied head, which, honestly, this is one of my favorite disembodied heads. But uh, So I actually took this bad boy into paint, and I know, not a lot of skill, but it was having a lot of trouble like reconciling the fact that there was almost no imp no orange in this area and I wanted it to make something orange. It at least had those two flowers to work with and it took a couple iterations for it to make something remar like this um, for that to work. So it just drew in orange, basically, blocked some in, and then had it iterate on that uh, and, and impaint a fox into that area. Which got me here. This was the first one. So I didn't like the way that it's like, it's like Firefox, right? <laughs> it looks like kind of a fire. It's got the spike yellow. It's, it doesn't really look like a fox except for the head kind of stylistically. But I've got kind of a problem with the eye and I don't know. I've lost something. I do like the blues in detail here though. But as you can see, it's also slightly adjusting parts of the face every time I do this. And one thing it's doing is it's making the eyes more and more brown and bloodshot as well. So I iterate the... I, I, in, I take this image as my new input, and then I in-paint into that. And we get this, which kind of has arms and legs, because I kind of had to draw some in. Um, but this worked for me pretty much now this image isn't finished though because the eyes are almost just completely bloodshot at this point so what i ended up doing was going into paint and just fucking painting the eyes in myself like just layers of watercolor there's layers of watercolor over oil and it doesn't look quite as good if you zoom in on it because you can see how it's kind of smudgy of the oil base layer but it i i ran so many iterations trying to get the ai to in paint blue eyes like 20 iterations and they all i was convinced at the end of 20 iterations that it didn't know what eyes were but again the in painting feature is in beta it, it's a little bit cranky and eyes are not a strong point of this program in general although it was doing a pretty good job up to this point um, so I had to take, and like, let's do these side by side too. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a different one, but still. Anyways, what I'm getting at is that, and actually I kept going. So I actually took that as the base image, took the same prompt essentially, and just kind of had it redraw it, I think, using a lot of heavy guidance from the image I'd already made, because I thought it was pretty perfect. I didn't want it to screw up my eyes. But I also wanted it to integrate kind of the fox a little bit better. And I think these ultimately did that, but I don't like what it did to the rest of it. It really kind of simplified elements that I liked. This one was really cool, though. It, it has the feel of, like... A, uh, a tattoo. I could really see this as a tattoo. It's awesome. Also, just fucking covered in tattoos herself. I dig the way the fox looks. I really dig this texture from like oversaturating an area of the paper and introducing uh, watercolor pigment to it. That's how you would do that normally. It kind of washed out I, it's so cool. I, I dig that. I love it when I do it, and I started to love it when this thing does it. The top of the head is also looking pretty cool. The hair is morphing into something up here. Oh, those eyes. <laughs> those eyes. That was a very angry fox. But I love this. This kind of... I, I don't know how to describe it. Wispy? It kind of matches the hair, you know, in art style. And that's what I was trying to do because 
ultimately, I, I don't think that the art style here quite lines up. And, and honestly, in the prompt, I simplified it a lot. I took out a lot of the elements, like the emphasis on line work that I was using here. So could I have made the prompt more complex and made this fox look a little bit more like this on this image? Probably. But, you know, that's the art of it. You get to make the decisions about how you want to change it and when you want to stop. So this is interesting, but I'm, I'm losing detail and getting a little bit more ambiguity down here. The hair is also fusing together over time. However, this actually did end up with pretty cool blue eyes. I think this is kind of cool. From a distance, this one gets a little washed out. But from a distance, this one kind of has a galaxy effect, which is kind of cool. Also, this turned into a tribal tattoo at some point. And then from there, so you remember the image of the short hair and the hoodie in front of the graffiti? So I took that into high concept, high concept fantasy princess, um, but using that as the, the base image. And then this was a vintage vacation photo, realistic fox, purple dress, flowing hair riff on the original it's something it looks kind of uncanny to me it reminds me of some art that i saw like it was really popular i think in the 2010s and stuff and then i kept kind of i would do like five iterations of the same prompt on the best image of each generation and kind of generationally select for certain poses and certain elements Oh yeah, and then I tried, so this is all just like clip art that I jumped in there and tried to get that to iterate into kind of a book with a magic spell coming out of it. And oh man, the other thing this thing doesn't do well is fingers. Um, so that's a bit tragic. The eyes on this one though are, are pretty good. I really dig them. They look quite real. That That looks quite almost photographic. But that that is the other thing, even with the in-painting feature, even when you're just... Because I was only trying to change this area, and I think in part it's because I'm running the face fixer even when I'm doing the in-painting, and I think that scans the whole image regardless. So it tweaks the eyes every time, which might mean that I can do this without tweaking the face every time, but I think it's also going to just change it a little bit every time as well no matter what I do or how limited the in-painting is. Let me actually take you through the process of making something here. So think about, so this is a technology that evolved in part as uh, just kind of like understanding image tags. So commas are pretty important in between kind of individual elements of this just to kind of give it a way to think punctuation is important as usual in writing uh let's see actually it might be interesting iterate off of this image so guidance is going to be i believe how much it goes from this initial image so if you turn that all the way up it's going to you know, it's going to look quite a bit like that. I'm I'm assuming this means that it's keeping like 50% of that image and randomizing the other half. This determines how strongly it's going to try to push the prompt. And this is a lot different than the original image. I do think that we could probably find an American flag in here if we tried and turn this fella into Donald Trump, maybe? Okay. So, now remember... This is just the UI, and I think this is really helpful because it gives you kind of ideas of what... I do think that these are pretty helpful, just in kind of giving you ideas of what you can do. But remember that you're not limited to this. You, Whatever you can imagine and write in there, you could do. But let's say that we want this to be detailed and intricate. Let's go with that. And let's go with the visual style. I want... Mm. 
Anime might work. Graphic novel would be interesting. I'm going to work in street art to kind of keep some of the elements of the background, bring some of those back through. Do anime. Anime Donald Trump will be fun. Okay. And then you got your mediums. So what... Get a fair amount of detail out of colored pencils. Now again, if you can think of a medium, you know, it doesn't just have to be a pen, or you could use pen um, as your medium. Any medium you can put in there, just remember to put a comma after it. That's because ultimately, and you're going to see this in a minute, that's all it's actually doing. Now, don't want to mess with any of those. Camera, though. Let's go with the photo shoot. Oh, also, wait, I'm in landscape mode. <laughs> I'm not sure how much this actually changes. Except for these reference images. I think you're, you're probably getting the same options. Let's see. Let's do glamour shot. <laughs> that has a vibe. motions very excited to kiss this flag I've already got an artist in there and again any artist you can think of you are not limited to these artists and even like this is a website this is just kind of the aggregate of what that website tends to be like is my understanding same for art gym things like that I believe, but a lot of a lot of options built in CGI. No, I don't want it to look uncanny. Okay, so we won't deal with any of the CGI stuff, and go all the way back up. Let's see. And now we wait. I think I've got it set to do three images, and I guess I'll speed this up in post for you. But you can see as it goes from like 50% noise just making everything unrecognizable and it tries to work its way back to the original image by way of the prompt. So it tries to maintain the original image as much as it can while ultimately giving you what you're asking for. As you can see... We're getting some Trump. We're getting some flag. It, it's doing it fine. And it's got the... You know, I was wondering if it was going to use a lot of the same colors because those other images that I showed you that was iterated from that when I'd used kind of a 50% um, when I'd used, yeah, kind of a 50% basis on the original image, they had all, the background at least, had all looked very, very similar to the original. But this looks very different, although that is not looking like an American flag, let me tell you. Also, he looks like he's yelling at it. <laughs> when you do batches, I believe it's going to... Oh, wait. Well, when you do batches and you have it set to a random seed, and again, if you find a seed, kind of a layout that you like, you can change this from being random or you can copy a seed from one that kind of worked out. Like, say I want them to be kind of in the frame in the same places. I can continue to use this particular seed. And each time you use a seed, it's going to produce the same images if you're using the same prompt, making this uh, replicable. As long as you, probably the hardest part for someone else is to have the original image that I'm riffing from. But as long as you have that and you know all the things that I put in there, then you can do it. And also what I want to show you is prompt that I wrote in is here. And as you'll see, I kind of wrote it in the same format, and they just added in every all of these things. I could write this stuff in. I could take all of this. 
add it in here and remove all of these if I wanted to. There is a benefit actually to having those though because you can completely change the prompt and still kind of keep the same vibes for a session. Oh, I I see. I see a young lady here. Or maybe an older lady. I'm not <laughs> that doesn't look like a flag, though. <laughs> okay, so... And, and then kind of making observations based on this. I think anime might be throwing it. So let me just queue up the next set. Oh, wait, I did say a flag. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. No wonder. No wonder it's so far off. <laughs> it gets his hair really well, though. That That's pretty on point, though. Hands again, bit of a mess. The uh, the midpoint of arms can really screw with it too sometimes. Anyways, that one's done. So let me stop that so we can move on to this where I actually specify American flag. Because I was already getting the colors. And stars and maybe kind of stripes. <laughs> Yep, that's not a flag either, although Donald may be in flag print and also standing in front of a flag. Yep. Yep, uh, that's that's an interpretation of the American flag. I mean, sure, maybe if you zoom in really... <laughs> I also really like the way that they look before they finish uh, a lot of times around this stage. Um, it looks like they were painted like with really kind of chunky strokes with really thick paint. And I'm trying to figure out how to get it to produce images like that more regularly. Um, I'm thinking impasto. That is the term for using thick paint. Maybe putting in brush for rokes would help. Okay, he, he lost the striped pants. He does still have a starry jacket, though. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and stop that one and try to make sure it doesn't include a woman this time. There can't be many, many images of Trump kissing women, though. Maybe I'd be surprised. He's He's been to some parties. But it's like, where is it drawing that from? There are actually images for sure of him 
kissing flags. Let me see if I back off on prompt strength, because that's going to radically change the image. So back to like 7.5. See if I can get a little bit more of the original image in there. You know, like, I'm realizing it, but, uh, he, he has kind of a perfect face for AI to do this thing with. It's very, like, his hair is very ge geometric. It's very easy to get those waves in there, make that look right. His mouth already looks a little alien, and his eyes are already horrific to gaze upon. And you don't really see the eye part, which is the part it has trouble with, you know, fleshy, wrinkled anus things like we see in this image that it can do I like that it's actually taken this and make made it look like a paint uh, like a picture of a painting which I guess makes sense since it's a glamour shot and you can and you can see the texture of the paint and how the light hits it which is really interesting well you could see that's that last step always fucks it up now it just looks more surrealist than impasto will this one is interesting. This one's kind of working out. He's so worked up, his ties flan flown all sideways. This is actually very close to what I wanted, except it, again, looks like he's yelling at the flag. But this, this genuinely looks like a, an American flag, and still looks kind of impasto. So hold on, if I can just stop it now, like one stage before it finishes. Please, please, please don't... Yes! And, and that... That is technique, my friend. See, I, you, if you just sit and wait for it to finish, when it decides it's done, you may get an inferior image. And, and thankfully, because of what I was saying about seeds earlier, this would be repeatable. All it needs is the seed number and all the rest of the information. I could just do it over and then stop it at exactly the right point. Like, what if I wanted a little bit more smudge in there? I could do that. But let's move on to a prompt that actually sounds kind of fun. A fox in a suit giving a speech at a podium. And that doesn't look like a fox. Let's say anthropomorphic. A N. You may be asking yourself, why Norman Rockwell? And I often ask myself that. But he has a very, a very signature style. And the thing I like about that is that it is very symbolically tied to what we think of as being very traditional. Especially very traditional American. So when you see something surreal inserted into that... It becomes a very strange experience as kind of a meta experience. It is... Wow. Okay. I'm a little scared. I'm actually going to stop that one early because I really like it. Although, I'm going to have to try to paint in the fox. Nope, it finished. Oh god. Oh god. These faces look scary. Um, I'm 
Okay, so let me like cue that up again and then use this as an input. So from here, let's actually talk about the artistic process in going from an image that's kind of what you want or kind of a sketch of the idea that you want into specifically the image that you are trying to make or the one that you have in your mind's eye making that real. So what I'm doing here is taking this image as my starting point and then running that back through the prompt to make it even more like the prompt, I guess. And I am I am seeing a lot of foxes. <laughs> what I actually had meant to do, and this is fine, that I that I do this too. I wanted to show you how you can kind of iteratively screw with it with in painting. Wish there was like, is there a, oh, there is a clear button. I'm a rube. Okay. Okay, so for the end painting, you want to kind of take it make it more specific to what you actually want instead of the whole image. You don't want to like put the image within the image necessarily. Although this has become very interesting. <laughs> I dig that. I dig that. I mean, they look better as foxes than they ever did as people for sure. So let's play with that in painting. And kind of what I showed you before, that's going to be a little bit difficult for it to in paint, I think, because there's not a lot of orange in that part of the frame. So actually, and again, I, I, I think art comes from like, what what is art? That's what we ultimately should be getting to here in this conversation. What is art? What makes something art? Art is a, a set of techniques within a medium that solves a problem. The problem in the 1800s was that there wasn't photographs and therefore people did portraits. Artists, that, that, was, that was the most common type of art at that time. Then you have people taking portraits to become photographers. Their medium is the photograph. I, I think that this might be the birthing of a new form. And it's because there are so many weird little technical nuances that you can learn about this to make it more interesting and to make it more what you want instead of something random. It's not a thousand monkeys on a thousand typewriters and you're editing together the best of it to make a novel. Although, yeah, kind of, actually. That's not... It's a, it's a lot more guided of a process than that. You can exercise a lot of control over it. This poor fella. I actually got my podium, finally. And I guess this guy's working lights. <laughs> Looks like a precarious place to be working, though. This is going to be the third image. I was doing these in batches of three. I've just been closing them early. But we're going to let this one play out. Oh, yeah, and then I can do my in-painting.
These guys look more like raccoons, but I dig I dig that. That's cool. It looks like the uh the morning commute for a bunch of business foxes. It really seems to understand anthropomorphic fox pretty well though. I'm I'm getting what I wanted, for sure. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, it starts with roughly the same image. Also, I didn't notice this, but I think he's got like pages. He's got he's got a whole book up his sleeve. A whole binder behind him. Got some exceptional notes. Ooh, okay, this this I think this is showing potential. I'm not sure that it's gonna be able to get to orange though, which is it might give us the shape, it might bring in some of the orange, we might have to iterate again on this image with the same prompt. It's really easy to fine-tune this area into something that looks right. Hopefully it'll help fix these faces. So what I just queued up is going to be another iteration of this image, another three iterations, running through the same prompt with the same area selected. So it's, oh no, actually, sorry, I didn't select in painting. Same area selected to make it more foxy. I think I like the style of this one more. Okay. Because this is like Cubist. I don't know how it got that from Norman Rockwell. I mean, although I still have all of these art influence. Oh. Well, Glamour Shot, I guess, is okay. Okay, those are fine. Those are fine. Okay, so this, we use this as my input. Use the same drawing, maybe expand the margins a little bit. Give it a little bit more room. 
I usually draw exactly where I want it to, but it will kind of insert it into the background if you give it a little extra space sometimes. So we'll see what we can do with that. One of the things that you'll see that it... No, maybe not. Make him a wise fox instead of excited. But I guess you can see what I mean about it sometimes having trouble matching in the art style. <clears throat> Although, again, we could take the same prompt and inputs and iterate it through again to have it reincorporate everything. And this was a fairly simple prompt, so I think I could probably do that. Oh, God. Look to the sky. Let's see. So the prompt strength doesn't have to be super high since we already basically have the image that we want and we just want to tweak it. We're going to give it a high guidance, low prompt strength. We're already there. It's not... <laughs> and we'll queue that up next. Maybe one of the next ones will get it a little better. But I do actually kind of like the way that's painted. And the, <laughs> the smirky. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> it's just all frame is the only problem gone a bit too far but then again I did actually give it more space so perhaps that was the mistake As it tried to fill the space. Let's see if it'll try to do that again or if I can get a forward facing fox this time. Because if not, I may have lied to you. It, it may be important to crop it more closely. So I'm going to take that prompt and go back into the end painting. Yeah, because those are going out of frame. Okay. This is the one where I reiterated it through there. So it's going to be using that general image as kind of a basis, but it's going to be able to remix a lot of it. Although you can see, oh, that's right. I didn't give it much prompt strength, but just, okay. Right, right, right. I forgot what I did. 
I'll just not say that. Just edit that out, Editor Jackie. Just do that. Reprocessing the image, though, has allowed me to potentially save the... Oh, God, they may have gotten worse, though. This guy's no longer beh behind the flag, which is cool. I have a microphone now. This guy finally looks decent. This guy is sucking up my ass. <laughs> oh, oh no, she's looking horrific. Oh, she actually looked... Uh, okay. I'm ready to fight. It did... I have a hand now! Okay, finally got that second arm. I kind of like the fact that the human politicians look like ghouls, though. That's really cool to me. Okay. So let's go back to this one. Which is not in painting, but iterative. And let's give it less guidance strength, which should allow more chaos in. So it's going to be like 60% chaos, 40% base image. Try that. Because these are working out pretty... Whoa! This... Oh, these are going places. Oh my. <laughs> Won't you please think about the children? This is fascinating. I I do love this image though. I think I'm going to think of that as one of my final images. I will say what this has done for me in making me feel the joy of running through an artistic process to create something more than, you know, to create something transcendent, to create something that really expresses something. I'm feeling that with this. And it also makes me think that, you know, it, that this would be even more artistic if I had more creative control. Like I could, honestly, it's it's ma it's making me want a tablet <laughs> to be able to paint into these things and kind of clean them up a bit. I'm not sure that this is going to work, but again, they look better as foxes than they ever did as human beings. And now I have a cell phone in my hand instead of a fox. Let's take this image, use it as an input. And then copy in this prompt and iterate that. Although I already like the way the fox face looks. That is a part of the image that I think would be the most interesting to see more versions of to try to find something. Well, basically saving my progress with having appropriate hands and still keeping all the ghouls in the background without any of them having morphed into foxes.
Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I just had it minimized. Oh, yeah, right. Had a better base image for this. And really, because it fixed the hands, that's such a big thing. That even though some of those results kind of look like what I wanted, I need I need those hands, my man. I need the hands. It is so rare that it gets hands right. I've just got to roll with it. I don't want to paint hands. Not today. I also don't have that tablet yet, so, you know, I couldn't if I wanted to. Just remember, folks, you can reshuffle the faces, but you don't necessarily make them less terrifying. Gives me some strangely, like, Black Hole Sun vibes. The more I see these, the more I think the first one probably had it best. These are interesting, though. But... Use this as input. And let's go with... Clear. Cool. Marker. Marker. I don't think it's doing anything. There we go. Because there's other images, like this one. I don't think this one was the best, though. Eh. So not the best. This one. This one looks really cool. Unfortunately, it, it, it gave my gallery of ghouls a uh, foxification. But if I could get that to something like that, that would be really nice. Mm. 
Actually, let's go really heavy on the prompt strength for this. This has apparently done the exact opposite of what I thought it would do. It is deconstitutioning the vaguely newspapery thing on the wall. Okay, whatever. No way I did it messed up the hand. Okay. We downloaded two of these, and that's one of them. Yeah, I guess I just iterated a bunch. Okay. So the finished ish. Nope. We'll get there. Here we go. So this is where we got with that little bit of work. And as you can see, there's a lot of ways to influence your creativity over the ways that you tweak this. Again, I think there's a really big opportunity to be able to go in here and retouch and like make these hands look normal. <laughs> um, I don't think these fix faces can be fixed, but I actually like the distortion, especially in the kind of surrealism of the overall image in that it's supposed to be realistic traditional very american wholesome image that is distorted by a otherwise unassuming fox in a suit and these absolute ghoulish distortions of 
presumably the politicians. I think I want to call this the political circus. And I mean, I clearly there is more I could do as an artist to make this more than what it is. I'm sure that if I knew more about styles of art, mediums, various things like that, a lot of different intersections of knowledge, I could make this even better. And I'm sure if I took more time and if I was doing like dozens of iterations at once, I could eventually find some things that were really specifically kind of what I wanted. And then it's just a thing that you got to work, you know? Um, but I don't, there is the really basic stuff you can do, and that looks pretty good, where you're just kind of typing in words and you aren't really playing with it much more than that. And that's what a lot of the online releases have kind of been like, which is why I was so interested to find Stable Diffusion and actually be able to play with all of this stuff and not really have to use anybody else's servers or have to pay for server space, but just do everything on my own rig. Now, you do need a decent computer and preferably a, a GPU to do this, but... uh it's pretty attainable and you know I, I think of it as an art because there is seriously a technique to it there are a lot of things that i'm sure that i am missing there's a lot of like what what the mo oh, well i guess there's only one model i can choose from but inference steps i kind of understand how that works but not necessarily um the upscaling i don't know a bunch about that but i am impressed with how well that works because my under it, it takes a lot of processing power and that scales up quite a bit as you get higher resolution images so what this is doing is it's actually making a fairly small image and then using an automatic upscaler as kind of a final touch to make it what we see um, ultimately when you download the image And another thing that I wanted to say, just to tie this to another piece of art history that I haven't heard anyone talk about, because, you know, everybody who knows a decent am a amount of history knows the whole, well, photographers weren't considered artists when photography started argument. It's important to this context, but like the, uh, the, the take heard around the world, because it is basic modern art history. But one that you may not know about is a school of artists known as automatic artists. And they would do things like, you know, without looking at the paper, they would kind of doodle and draw and then try to like look at that doodle and say, what is this? And turn it into something or, you know, trying to find ways to remove their will, at least from the beginning of the process. And really what they were trying to do was they were they were by doing that doodle kind of making a seed and then allowing their mind to work from that seed into something that they wanted to depict. And, you know, they experimented with trying to remove themselves more and more from the process. And it was called automatic art, which I think is interesting because that's kind of, this is automated art at the very least. Um, and it is, in a lot of ways, like the logical, technological um, extreme or... Maybe it's better to say extension or next iteration of that idea. Anyways, I find it fascinating. And it's one of those things like when you learn how Jackson Pollock actually made his paintings and, and the effort and the thought and all of that that was put into it and a lot of the, the technical aspects that you wouldn't necessarily realize by thinking it's just paint thrown at a canvas that it's more than that, that there is technique to it, that is the moment where you go from ridiculing something to recognizing it as a power, as having power, as being a true art. And I think that while the public recognition isn't necessarily there for this yet, I think that I have at least demonstrated the potential and again, I've talked about a number of ways, and, and I did show you. I mean, look, I am not going to claim by any means that... Oh, where is it? 
that that the human contribution to this image is meaningful. But if I had taken more time, it could be. And then it could have remixed what I drew, and then I could remix what it draws, and it could be a feedback loop. We could give to each other, and I could modify, and this could be a medium. This is, you know, this replaces paint. This replaces a pencil. This is your pencil. Draw with it what you want, and learn, more importantly, and this is why I think everyone should learn art, by the way, is that art functionally teaches problem-solving. For a lot of 2D art forms, the problem that you inherently have to solve is making a two-dimensional image look three-dimensional, giving it that impression to make it impressive, because that's the kind of thing that we have grown to like in our art. And every art has its inherent, and every medium especially, and every medium has its own challenges. Essentially, I'm taking words and knowledge of artistic methods, artists, and, you know, various things like that, and using them to make an image that looks, to make an image that looks like it was produced if I do it right by human hands, because it is essentially based on human art. It is essentially what we have created here is the art of our collective unconscious. And we are allowed to guide that collective unconscious in whatever way we want to, to reach the final outcome, which is again, ultimately a transcendent form of what the original automatic artists were trying to do. So I hope this gives you a different look at AI, a different look at art history, and a different look at what the future of art history could be. Will digital artists embrace this? Because I think that digital artists are probably the people who could best embrace this by, you know, kind of tweaking and iterating and changing elements and, you know, maybe just kind of using it as a sketch to plan a actual digital art piece that you do yourself to use it as inspiration. This could be, in that way, an amazing muse. But if I haven't convinced you yet, I don't think you're going to be anytime soon. I think you're just going to be one of those late adopters that will eventually accept it in 10 or 15 years. But I did what I can. So I'm going to put some links on the screen so that folks who are interested in doing so, who like to give people money, can give me a little bit of money for putting this together for you. And if you have any questions, there's going to be uh, links to where you can get the UI. I'm not guaranteeing it'll work for your computer, but it, it might. Um, just try it. Uh, it's better to follow this link because, you know, I've tested it out myself. There are other UIs made by other people and some of them may be malicious. Some other downloads of this particular UI found off of GitHub might be malicious. Usually going directly to GitHub is the best way to, and, and you know, trying to find out if this is actually the person who made it or if someone has kind of uploaded malicious. A anyways, I'm not entirely sure how GitHub works, but I do know that this link is, as far as I know, good and not doing anything malicious on my computer. It's just here to help me make art and it's been awesome. So if you want to experiment with this stuff too, I'll help you get started in the description and now you know a little bit more about the process and how you can do things with it. So the world is your oyster, ladies and gentle foxes. Have a good day. I hope that this inspires you and at the very least gives you something to think about.